Welcome back and sorry for the delay for uh, part two. Uh, we're going to continue looking at pointers. Um, in the first part, we looked at uh, how to declare and initialize pointers. We look at the different operators, the dereference and the um, on the address operator. And we looked at you know how to do kind of the pass by value and pass by reference using pointers. Um, in this part two, we're going to look at the connection between mo we're going to mostly look at the connection between pointers and built-in arrays. Um, we have used built-in arrays before, but it mostly we we have been kind of hand waving at it, which is we've had them, um, but uh, we really haven't gotten into that. And we've used arrays before, but mostly arrays that we're declaring um, declaring and have to include the uh, the array library when we're using it. And so we're going to get a little bit more into that and show you that um, the logic underlying pointers is very similar to how arrays actually operate inside C++ program. Um, a second big topic is, um, and sort of related to this, is how we're going to use const with pointers. So we've used const before, meaning as a constant. Uh, probably the better way to explain what const means is that it means that data is or variable is read only. You can get the information, but you can't write that information, which means you can't change it. Um, and we're going to see how this happens with different pointers and how you, uh, because pointers have two different things. They have the value and they have the address. And so you can make the address constant, you can make the value constant. Um, and but the, depending on how you're um, lining those up, you may or may not get an error message and we'll go through some of those scenarios. And lastly, we're going to lose something we've seen before uh, when we were doing uh, sorting and searching of arrays, you know, using the begin and end and, and what's going on with that. Because once again, this has to do with kind of what's happening with arrays. You're pointing to a location, usually the first location in the array, um, and then the, the allocated memory after that. Um, and so using begin and end, uh, there's reasons why that's important because arrays don't always know where their, let's say, their bounds are. So we're going to start looking at some of these, and this is not really so much about applications, this is more about explaining what's going on um, on the back end. So we're going to look at built-in arrays, um, which another way is to say they're fixed size array data structures. So we looked at arrays, we also looked at vectors. We know that vectors can expand in size, as we did with, let's say, our land and lakes game that we, uh, we used. So when we wanted to have a list of things that would increase, we used vectors. Uh, when we used uh, things like for our, our board that were fixed in size, we used arrays. So where have we seen built-in arrays before? Um, I'm sure some of you have seen this line, char board, uh, square brackets 40, square brackets 40, um, when we declared, let's say, the two-dimensional array that we used for our land and lakes uh, board. Uh, so what this is is a two-dimensional array with vertical and horizontal dimensions of uh, 40 uh, slots, and they're composed of uh, character uh, uh, variables of the type uh, character. Um, and so this was kind of unlike how we used different arrays where we declared it that, you know, this is an array with this name, um, this array holds this type of variable, and how many variables, how, how, many, uh, how, how many things are being held in the array, so how many slots there are in the array, and then maybe what was in the array, i.e. the data. But when we did this, I mean, as, uh, we kind of did this as kind of a shortcut, but basically this is a built-in array saying, look, this is an array called board, 40 by 40, um, and made of characters. And this is what, when we talk about a built-in array, this is what we're referring to as opposed to the arrays that we learned about in, in chapter seven. So um, when you declare a built-in array, um, once again, I give you an example. So you're gonna give the type, the type would be char, in that case it could be integer or double or some other type of uh, a variable type. And then we're going to have the array name. In the case of, um, you know, uh, of our game before, it was board. But we also had other, let's say, when we were doing levels of the board, we had like our hazard board, our bomb board, our enemy board. Um, and so the point is they were still made up of characters, but that, uh, you know, um, that, uh, the, that the, the name was there as board. And then we have the size of the array. Um, and because in, we did have a two-dimensional array, we had two different uh, uh, square brackets. Um, and, uh, you know, we have the array, so 40 by 40 is one dimension is 40, the other dimension is 40, um, but if you had a single a dimensional array or one dimensional array, you would just have one set of square brackets. And what this is doing, it's telling the compiler, so um, let me just kind of preview a few things. What you're doing basically is like a pointer, and what the, the array is doing, um, the square brackets operate in the same way as the asterisk does when we use pointers. It's pointing to a particular location, the address, um, and that is the first element in the array. And so that's what's in there. But what is happening when you put a number inside the square braces, it's telling to reserve, you know, 40 slots of memory and that these will be filled in with that information. So the point is that 
from the first element to the last element, there's a memory allocated, and in that memory, we're going to put a series of values, okay? Um, for obvious reasons, uh, it has to be a constant greater than zero. An array of zero has nothing in it. A negative array makes no sense. It's like saying having negative height or negative width. Um, it has to be larger than zero. And um, so once again, here's an example of a one-dimensional array with integers. So we have an array named C composed of integers, and it has 12, um, uh, 12 elements in it. And then, you know, uh, set off by a semicolon as, as the, uh, in the declaration line. Um, so kind of similar to what I showed you before. Um, if you do not tell it what's inside the array, all those elements are basically set to zero. Um, now, what you could do with array objects is that the subscript, the square, the uh, square, bra the square, um, square brackets, uh, you can um, you can reference different parts of the arrays. And as we know, because we've done this before, the first element is zero. The last element is, if it was this one C, which has twelve elements, the last one would be at location eleven. So if you want to actually give it some values off the top, so we usually what we've been using, we've use, been using for loops to kind of populate our arrays. Um, before they're populated, they're, they have basically all their, all their element slots are zero. Um, but let's say we're gonna do another array named N with five slots. We could follow with curly braces and in them we can list out whatever, the, uh, whatever is, let's say the value at those different locations. Uh, so this is one that would be initialized, um, declared and initialized um, on the first line. Um, as I said, we haven't been really doing that as much um, uh, because we've been using for loops and using base, we're basically populating it with something else other than zero, whether it be uh, periods or whether it be you know uh, stars or something of that sort. Um, but basically, that's how you're setting up. And once again, this should not be surprising because this is sort of related to the the only thing difference is how you're declaring initializing it, but it's operating like the arrays that we uh, covered in the past. Um, if you don't, let's say, so in this one, we had five elements and we had five values uh, initializing it. If you have less than, let's say, the, one, the number of elements that you declared, it's just going to put zero, um, basically, or, um, or false. Um, you know, basically, there have null values in the ones that you do not declare until you actually give them a value. Um, now, the other thing here is if you give more, let's, so this one has five slots but it and five values, if you had given it six, what well, you would have probably gone a common error that many of us have gone is we got a segmentation fault, which means we went over the size of the array and we we're trying to put a, a value into a slot that does not exist. And the reason is, is that when we declared the array, whether we declared it as a built-in array or we did uh, declared it as a as an array as we did in the past, um, you know, we're allocating memory and we're then we're trying to put something in a place where there's no holder for it, and that's why you're going to get a compilation error, say segmentation fault. Um, and even though your um, your program might run, eventually when it gets to that point where it needs to use it, it's going to try to put it, like, so usually what happens is you're trying to, if you have something in your program that the array might be fine when we initially declare it because it's it has no values and it's, it's, it's all zeros and it doesn't reason to think it, but then we do some type of function or operation on it, which gives it more values than it can hold. At that point, it's gonna become a segmentation fault and the program is going to, um, program is going to fail because there's nothing individually wrong with any of this syntax like writing to an array there's nothing wrong with like declaring an array of different sizes but when you actually try to fit let's say set six things into five slots that's when the problem is going to be had so the point is that it can run until it fails um, so but you're not going to get an error message necessarily because each individual line is syntactically correct it's more about the log the logical um logically can't work syntactically can syn uh, syntactically meaning syntax so if you, don't, um, if you don't give it a size when you declare it, um, the, the number of elements in the initializer was, so let's say, for example, we didn't say five elements, we just gave it five values like this as an example, um, it would assume that it's a five element array and basically it would be a five element array, um, which means that even though we didn't say five, because we had five there initially, it assumes it's five and going forward, it would be a five element array. So how do you um, pass built-in arrays to functions? Which means how do we pass this in, you know, how do we pass the array and the values in the array to the functions? Um, so you could, 
for example, if using me, and this is where we're going to start talking about where pointers and built-in arrays are similar, um, you could pass it with like an address operator. So what you could do is, let's say you have an array, we get saying array name here in general, but let's say it's board. We could do the address operator board, and then let's say using the square brackets, the first element. And what that would do is that would point to the first element. Um, now, you don't need to do this because arrays have their own logic, even though they're operating similarly, so you don't need to add an address operator. The array knows to start off at the first element, okay, which is at the element um, at zero. Uh, for, um, so basically, we, the same arithmetic we've been using with arrays and how to re read and write for them applies here. Um, and you can basically write and read to an array unless for some reason uh, you add uh, a const to it, and that means it's kind of fixed. It's read only, but not write. You can't write to it. So um, you can um, you can kind of give um, a built-in arrays parameters, which means uh, if you want to make sure it has only has a certain size and it can't be changed, uh, you can do this. Like for example, when you are doing it in um, uh, when you're doing an inline function. So imagine some elements, which would sum or add up all the, the values in, uh, of, in, in all the elements in array. Uh, you can imagine this as being a function called sum elements. It takes in uh, two, two arguments. It takes in uh, the values, which are, cannot be changed, i.e. the values that are in the array, and then also the size of the array, because it needs to know how large the array is, which means essentially this is telling the for loop how long it wants to run. Um, and it's going to return to you an integer, which is the you know the total sum of all the values in the array. Okay. And what key thing here for the, our point is that each of these are declared const. So it's not int values and it's not size t number of elements. What it is is it's constant, which means that um, as it, as the function processes the values, it can't change the values in the array. So let's say you have an array and the values are one, two, three, four, five. It can't change the one to a two. It can't change the two to a five. Um, those are kind of set in place. So the values in the array, the other thing is you can't change the size of the array, um, but we've known this before because if we change the size of the array, uh, what happens if the array gets smaller than the number of elements we have in there? Um, they get lost in the either, and also we could have segmentation faults if we try to put more values than the size of the array. So arrays basically you know, have, have a preset value. Um, we know we have something else called vectors that allows us to do things that we know are gonna change in, in, lists that are going to change in size. Um, now, if you wanted to write this in terms of pointers, and so so let me just take a step back just to kind of make the connection, is that what an array is doing is allocating a certain, uh, a certain, um, you know, certain string of memory to holding the values of this array. And what the array really is doing is, is marking the beginning of that string. And so it's basically telling you where the first element is. And then what you can do, if you want to search for it, it's like, well, first element plus one, two, three, 10, 12, to kind of get to all the other memory slots that are in that array. Um, so basically what the array is doing is pointing to places in the memory where information is being held and associated with that ar array. The, what all the array is doing is telling you where the beginning of that information is, and then the rest of the information is um, in the allocated memory slots. So you could do this with pointers because what pointers are also doing are pointing to, you know, slots in the memory. So instead of doing it like this before, and this kind of shows you the connection between the uh, the reference operator, the asterisk, and the square brackets as we use them in a ret for arrays, um, is that you could just declare it like this, and it could be it would work just as well. So we could say there's a constant integer, and then asterisk the reference for values meaning that we're going to get the value at that, little, that slot in the array, and also the size of it um, can be kind of um, set. So from the perspective of the compiler that is putting it together, there is no difference between a pointer and, and a built-in array. Um, so the point is that So, um, the, so the point is whether it's receiving a function, uh, it's a pointer of a, a built-in array, it, it doesn't matter in the sense the compiler does not differentiate. They're both ways of getting information. The question is whether the function itself knows whether it, how it's getting information. 
whether it's a single variable, um, meaning a single uh, a single value in the array, or whether it's all the values in the array. So So what's happening um, kind of underneath the hood is that um, what is happening when it gets, let's say, const and value square brackets, the compiler says, OK, um, I'm not sure what that is. And what it does for itself is that it converts it to a pointer, even though that's not how we wrote it. Um, and so this is kind of it's easier for them to point to the different values and you know basically uh, convert it so that it understands that it's looking for all those different memory slots following the initial value in the array. So this creates several problems, um, and this creates why we can do certain things with vectors that we can't do with arrays. So like we could say uh, vector A and vec equals vector B, um, and we could say if it equals, if it doesn't equal, if it's greater, things of that sort. We can do com a relational operators, we can also, which means that we can do greater than, less than, equal to, does not equal to. Uh, we can't do that with arrays, and partly because we need we need a loop. So that's why we're using for loops all the time when we are using um, using arrays. And um, so the point is, we could do it so that we can compare the first element of one array with the first element of another array, the second element of the of one array with the second element of that array. But we could, and we could go through that and test it each way using a for loop. Uh, but we couldn't. Um, uh, you know, we can't actually compare the whole array to the whole array. Um, the same thing is that we can't, in a sense, uh, assign all the values from one array to uh, to another array. So we can't say, um, so we can't just, in relational would mean we use a double equal sign, but we also can't assign it, which means that we can't say um, array B equals array A to transfer the values from array A to array B. All we can do is we can do that with a for loop, which means take the first value of array B, write it to the first value of array A, take the second value of array B, write it to the second slot um, in, a, in array A, and so forth, and run through the entire um, the for loop, have it kind of doing the reading and writing across from that. The last thing is that they don't really know its size. Um, that uh, That's why we have to tell it how large it is. So if you think about how you would declare array, you tell them what kind of elements, but you also have to tell them how large the array is because it doesn't, it knows where it begins because that's where it's pointing to. It doesn't necessarily know where it ends and that's why you have to pass that argument to that. Um, and so this is why it doesn't have, what I was talking before, bounds checking. It doesn't know where it begins and ends. And as a result, if you try to write more to, to an array than it can hold, um, it's going to try to do that until it can't and then basically crashes. And that's what a segmentation fault is. It's basically saying you went outside the segment you went outside the bounds, um, and and there and that is meaningless to it, and so it can't continue and it crashes. Um, so if you think about this, what an array is doing is allocating memory slots, um, and and those memory slots are kind of fixed. Then you can understand why there's segmentation faults, um, because it doesn't seem logically that you know, okay, so five or six, you, I gave you six, so in, you know, stretch a little bit and create another slot. It can't do that because that memory might have been allocated to something. Um, so sometimes you're going to have to use built-in arrays and you can use it for command line arguments. And you kind of see this sometimes in Windows when you are, um, you probably have not done, seen the command line argument uh, because you, you probably have seen the window interface. As an older person and we had to do things from the command line, you know, the C, the C prompt or, you know, things of that sort, um, you might need to use built-in arrays for that. And I'm going to give you a few examples. So. If you're looking for like directories you slash p and you look at the directories and you want to find what are all the files or what are all the folders in a directory um then you know you probably need a built-in array um well let, i will get into the linux and the os x for right now because that's kind of beyond even my own familiarity um in windows you would do that kind of and you kind of see this sometimes uh, when you're looking at directories um kind of the same logic when you're looking at the directory like um, um, when you're doing like a web page and you're seeing what's there. So we're going to sh shift to the next topic, which is using using uh, constant with pointers. And so there are the, 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 the key thing here is that you want to allow a function to have access to variables to do what it needs to do, but you don't want it to, do, be, to give it more access than it needs. 
Um, and what this is basically is that if it doesn't need, if it doesn't need to write to the uh, to the variable, then you don't want to give it permission to. So if you keep, if ever, if if something, all you need is to be able to look at it, to make it read only, um, it makes your life easier because nothing can change. Um, and if it does, if you if it if something in the function does try to change it, it's not going to be able to if you put it, make it constant. Um, and therefore, you're going to get an error message, and you can correct that. And that allows you to identify a potential problem where data is being changed in the process of using it. Um, so the principle of least privileges basically means uh, functions get access to data on a need-to-know basis. Um, and you can set these access specifiers. And you, you see this when we had classes, when we had public and private areas of the class. And we're just basically trying to keep uh, the call functions from actually changing the information and basically letting the class hold that information giving it the ability to show the information, but not an ability to rewrite it and holding, let's say, the va those values in the inside the class instead of making them inside the main program. So this is kind of what I was saying, that you, know, you, you don't need to declare constants. Like, if you don't, the program will probably work um, if logically and syntactically everything else is there. But you should probably more and more get into the habit of using that because what happens is that um, if you give access to it, thinks you're going to get a complex enough program, you're not going to know what all the moving parts are, and something's going to be changed. So the idea is that if the only function of this information is to be read or to be shown to something in the function as opposed to kind of uh, uh, performing an operation on it, get into the function of basically declaring it as a um, you can do this in terms of also not just in the sense of declaring it at the beginning of the program or the head of the uh, the main program. You can do this in declaring each function, which means that um, when you're when the when functions are taking in the various arguments of various variables into them um, in the function prototype, what you can do is declare it as a const, and that will prevent the function from actually changing it, um, even though what it was taking in might not have been uh, declared. So there are four ways to pass a pointer to a function. So a non-constant pointer, non-constant data. Um, well, we've done that already. That's kind of what we're doing with the pass by value and pass by reference. We're going to deal with a few other cases where, um, so here's an easier way to, 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 to kind of break down the four cases. A pointer has two different things. It has a value, which means whatever the value is, whatever value is being held at a different point in memory, and it has an address which means it has an address in the memory where that's being held. So you could have the address data or you could have what's at the address. So when we're talking about the data, we're talking about the value. So for example, uh, when we say non-constant data, we're saying the value the value of this variable can change throughout the, the program. So like if we have an integer called C, that uh, if it was non-constant, it could take on the value of five, seven, 11, 12, whatever, if it's constant, that integer value, uh, an integer uh, variable C only has one value, five. It can't be anything else. Does that make sense? So when we're talking about constant data, we're talking about that situation. When we're talking about the pointers, we're talking about the addresses. So the point is a constant pointer is one that always points to the same memory location, i.e. it's always pointing to the same place in the memory um, and that you know it can't be redirected to point at another point of memory. A non-constant pointer is something that can point to different slots in the memory, which means uh, it might be pointing to the location of variable x one time, um, but I can then make it look later to the, uh, the address where variable y is being held so I could give it different directions. So um, we're going to see go through a few a series of small functions that are going to show you know the type of problems you can have when dealing with each of these four cases, at least the, the two through four cases. We've done the first one already. Um, so non-constant pointer, non-constant data. That means basically it can, the data can be modified and the pointer can be modified. So we've seen this before. This is what we saw in the first video lecture when we were passing by reference and we we're showing how it can point a different point. We can, we can point to different places in the memory. Um, it can start off with a null pointer, then it points to location of a variable and then you can rewrite it again and again and again. Um, and the other thing about it is that when it's declared, it's not declared as a constant, which means that it doesn't, um, 
the address location of the pointer is 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 can be changed. Um, if we made we declared it as a constant, then that pointer can only point to one address location. Okay, so some of the uh, situations where it gets a little more complicated. So this is a non-constant pointer, which means the data is the same, but the address is changing. So, so the point is that uh, you might want to you're pointing to the loca one location in memory, you're pointing to different location in memory, but you wanted to give it the same value. Um, i.e. through the pointer. So i.e. whatever value the pointer had by pointing to one location, you want to point it to another location and, and, tra and transfer and pass that value. Uh, so that's what was happening here. Um, so here's the problem. And as this is something that's not, that's, not, that's not going to work because the pointer can't, it's basically just giving an address, it can't modify the, the data that's being held at different locations. The pointer is just telling you Here's, here's slot A, here's slot B, here, here's memory slot C. Um, and then what you, when you get there, you find the, the information. The pointer is not able to do that. So if you were to do a sample declaration like this, which means uh, const integer uh, asterisk count pointer, which means uh, constant, uh, let me read this right to left, count pointer is a pointer to an integer constant. Um, which means that it is pointing to a value that is a constant. So let's say, for example, um, we declared the integer, the integer called x was also declared as a constant, which means that um, it has one value, can only have that one value, okay? Um, the count pointer is pointing to that integer constant. Um, now, count pointer can point to other things, um, but count pointer, um, count pointer is not a constant. The address is not a constant, but the value it's pointing to is a constant. So let's just look. I'm, I'm probably, it's clear in my mind, I'm probably circling around. So let's just go through this as an example as we have up on the screen. Uh, so here's a simple function. We declare a function called f that takes in, um, that takes in, uh, that, that takes in an, uh, 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 a non a non constant pointer, uh, and and tries to reassign it a value. It doesn't return anything. We have the main program, and then we have um, we declare something called integer y, integer y, who has a value of zero. So then we are so we're saying that when something goes into what we're saying here is because the function prototype is saying that it's a constant, um, even though integer y is not declared a constant. What's going on here is that what what you're taking in is a constant. So the point is that it's pointing only to it's pointing to that data. It's pointing it's pointing to that point, which is the value of zero. So when we do f parentheses address operator y, we're saying we're it's it's basically taking in the address operator for y. Um, it's taking the address of y. Okay, so that's um, you know. It will it'll attempt to do something that, that can't be done. So let's see what happens when it actually runs. And this is where we're going to get the error message. So let's say that we take in something called x pointer. We give it the name x pointer. So we declare it locally as x pointer. It's a constant integer, as we know, because of the, of the function prototype. And we try to reset it to 100, meaning that it's we're pointing to 0, and we want to say make it 100. Um, we can't do that um, because basically uh, we said it's a constant, so we can't, in a sense, change it inside the function. So this is uh, what well, I was saying before. If we declare it constant in the function prototype, even if it was not declared a constant anywhere else, it means that the information we're taking in, the value is zero, um, and we can't, in a sense, assign it a different. We can't, therefore, then assign it another value inside the function because that would be writing to that location, um, but it only has read, read, uh, read privileges, okay, as it says. So second one is a constant pointer to non-constant data, which means that the pointer is, is constant and the, uh, the data, though, it might be changing. So it always points to the same memory location and the data location can change. So for example, um, you have a variable called x and it can be five, it can be seven, it could be 11. Uh, but x is being held in the same point in memory, and the pointer is always pointing to that location. Um, so, um, 
what's happening here is when you declare a pointer or const, it has to have some initial value, which means you have you can't in a sense assign it it's you can't assign it its value later on. So you can't declare it and then initialize it, give it its initial value later through some function or, or writing some function to it. It has to have its value it has to have its init it has to be initialized at the same time it's declared in the same line. So we can't um, we'll see that in the following slide. Um, So here we have um, a small program. So a main program, we declare two, uh, two, uh, two variables, two integer variables, x and y. As you can see, they're not given any, um, they're not being initialized. They don't have any, uh, they don't have any values to them. And so when we declare the pointer, so we're saying there is an integer, uh, sorry, a pointer integer that's constant um, and it's pointing to, and then we're giving it the value of uh, the address of x. But the thing is, does x have a value? I don't know. So um, we can assign the pointer a value because x hasn't, doesn't have a value, it can be moved around. But if we try to give it a different address, I remember, so when it was declared constant, it was declared to look at the address of x. So let's look, let, let me just do this, maybe clear, or let me talk about line. So in line five, we're declaring x and y, right? That means also x and y don't have a value at the, at the time, and x and y can be changed, which means they're not constants, they're different values can be taken on by x and y. Okay, then we make another declaration in line nine, and this is where we're declaring the pointer. We're saying the pointer is constant, okay? And this pointer, and we're giving, then we're also initializing it. We're saying we're initializing it to the address of x. Does that make sense? So the address of x is where it's pointing, and that's the constant thing. It cannot change. It always pointing to the address location of x. That's fine. Okay. So what we can do is remember x can have different values. So if we say uh, star point, ptr equals seven, we can make x seven. It might have been something before. We can make it then. Uh, star pointer 11. It can make an 11. What we can't do is point it to another address. So we can't say after it's been initialized and declared, um, declared initialized as pointing to the address of x, we can't say, well, now you have the address of y uh, because it's constant and it could not be changed. So the point is, is that um, we can't change the address in this location because even though the variables it's pointing to are, are the data, the values of those data can be changed the address cannot be changed because those are declared as a constant. And lastly, um, you know, uh, a constant pointer to constant data. So basically, your variable is a constant. It only has one value, and the pointer only points to one location. And it can't be rewritten. So pointing to the same memory location and the data of the location cannot be modified, or at least not can't, can't be modified via the pointer. Um, this is uh, so. What happens is this is basically a read only. Um, there's no way to modify the built-in array. And so what you're gonna see is const int star const. Um, pointer is a constant pointer to an integer constant. Is that what that is what it's meaning? So the const before is saying that the pointer is constant. The const after is saying that the integer it's pointing to is also a constant. Okay, so once again, a small, um, uh, a small program to illustrate what's going on. Uh, we have the main program and main uh, parentheses, curly brace. We are de we have two integers. The first one, the integer x has a value of five. And then there's we also declare an integer y, which uh, has no value at the, at the time. And then we declare um, the pointer. And so if you, this looks a little bit different than what we had before. Before it was just int star const pointer and then address of x, okay? So um, what we've added now is a const before that, which means that um, it's not just pointing to one location, it also has a, as a it, the integer that it's pointing to is also a constant. Um, so we can point out, we can see out, you know, the value of that. And we know what the, it, so the see out statement, it's gonna give us five because that's what X is, that's what it's, that's the value of X and, it's, and the pointer is pointing to X. Okay. So what we can't do, what we could, were able to do before is we could do star PTR equals seven because we could write, we could rewrite the value at X, right? 
it was uh, nothing before, and then we give it a value of seven. Now it, it starts off as five, but we can't give it the value. Um, because it's a constant, we can't rewrite the, the integer that's there, at least not through the pointer. So the point is that we can't do star PTR and say it's seven now, um, it's five, and it's, it's locked in at five, and it's read only at five. Um, and for the same reason as before, uh, we can't switch it from pointing to uh, the address of x to the address of y. And so we're going to get a we're going to get a mistake there as well. Okay, so last uh, quick little topic is when we talked about arrays, we did about sor uh, sorting and searching of arrays, and basically you were given the syntax and say, well, this is what sorts an array. Um, so this is just kind of a function that's a, that's in the uh, library array, and so we can just say sort, and sort is a function. It takes in two arguments, and it just basically says. The name of the array is colors, so from the color from the beginning of colors to the end of colors, and basically just saying sort it in an alphabetical order, beginning to end. Um, so before I was just saying this is what's happening. The reason why this is necessary is because uh, what we need to know is where it's starting in the memory, and as, as we're like the, because it, the arrays are basically allocating uh, in memory slots, um, it needs to know where that begins and where that ends, um, and if it doesn't the array doesn't know in of itself where it ends because it's really only pointing to the beginning of it. Um, and so when you're telling it to sort, it needs to, first of all, it needs to be able to point to the first element, but it also needs one to stop. Otherwise it would just keep going in, in memory locations and keep sorting and sorting and it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have a terminus. So what beginning and end are, bas are doing that. So um, what it's really doing, it's basically saying you have this built-in array. There are, the elements here, uh, the element has uh, the the location of that. So if you remember how we did this, uh, we just had um, uh, you to, to sort from beginning to end. So you can tell it where where it begins and where it ends. So you can, in a sense, put a value in there into the parentheses of begin and end. You can think of those as functions within the function. Uh, begin is a function, end is a function, and you're giving it a certain value. Um, and those values are arguments that are passed on then to the function sort.